Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Rev Atlas and you're watching the review of the Xiaomi Mi Max 2. Let's get this video started. Let's start with the design itself. The Mi Max was a large phablet and the Mi Max 2 is no different. At 6.44 inches in terms of display size, this blurs the boundaries between a smartphone as well as a tablet. The device is pretty sleek when it comes to the thickness, but it has a large physical footprint due to the large screen up front and the bezels at the top and bottom. It also has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which makes it a bit wider than some other phones with large display, including the Galaxy S8 Plus, which has an 18.5 to 9 aspect ratio, and that gives it a feeling that is quite thin. Even the Infinity display with dual edge. Uh, dual curved edges actually makes the S8 Plus feel a lot thinner than it actually is and a lot smaller than it actually is. But the Mi Max does not have much to mask its physical size itself and as a result it does feel pretty big and you'll need two hands to use it in most instances and you'll also need two hands to use the screen unless you have big hands like me but even for me it's a bit of a stretch. At the back you have a nice anti-fingerprint coating and while fingerprints still do appear you can only see it at certain angles and the entire thing feels really good to hold and gives quite a bit of grip as well. The antenna lines have been redesigned to the edges at both the top and bottom and overall the smartphone feels really well built and really solid. The weight distribution is on point and despite the huge 5300mAh battery the device doesn't feel all that heavy to use thanks to the well distributed weight. Coming to the display, the display is a 6.44 inch unit, it has 1080p resolution, 2.5D Corning Gorilla Glass for protection, has 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, 450 nits of brightness and 72% NTSC color gamut. Now indoors the display is beautiful, it works really well, the brightness is more than sufficient and it feels really good to use thanks to the 2.5D curved glass. Now when you look at it outdoors, as we are doing so right now, the display is not all that great considering that it is quite reflective. So the brightness does seem to be a bit insufficient in more cases where there's a lot of sunlight around you and you also get three capacitive buttons below the display which are capacitive and are backlit and you can even choose to have it off all the time or on all the time or even specify a timeout duration for the same as well. Coming to the internals, the Mi Max 2 is powered by a 14nm Snapdragon 625 chipset and comes with 4 gigs of RAM as well as 64 GB of internal storage that's expandable using the hybrid dual SIM card slot. Now when it comes to performance, the Mi Max 2 is not slow. It performs really well and really smooth throughout our experience and does not really hang or give up on us when we need it the most. In terms of gaming too, it does quite well and it's no slouch either, but it's not really in flagship territory either. It, we quite like the performance overall and considering that this comes with Android 7.1.1 Nougat out of the box with Mi UI 8, it's quite good and overall the performance is quite stable as well. Now coming to the cameras, at the back you have a 12 megapixel Sony IMX386 sensor with 1.25 micron pixel size and f2.2 aperture along with dual tone LED flash. Now the images taken with the camera are quite good in terms of detailing. There's a lot of detail and you can even crop into the photo later to readjust the frame if you wish to do so. The processing on the other hand is a bit heavy in terms of the saturation. Especially if you're shooting an HDR, the photos tend to be quite oversaturated and while it's, it might appeal to some, it certainly does feel a bit over the top to me in some instances at least. Now coming to the front camera, you get a 5 megapixel camera which has f2 aperture and it's an 85 degree wide angle of view. Now the same punchy colors and the saturation applies to the front camera as well, but I think on the front camera people sort of expect it to highlight the colors on the dresses, but not so much on the rear camera itself. Coming to the video recording quality, it can shoot in 4K at 30fps, but the quality is strictly speaking average. You get a lot of details, but then there's a lot of over sharpening as well, and as a result the videos don't look as pleasing, and there's no stabilization as well. At the top you have the 3.5mm audio jack as well as the infrared blaster port, and the 3.5mm audio jack does output good quality audio, however it is never flagship grade level. In terms of speakers, you have stereo speaker effect when using the phone in landscape mode, but then again, the output is not that loud in terms of volume itself compared to what I have found on other phones with similar stereo speakers such as the iPhone 7 Plus. At the bottom, you have a USB Type-C port that does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 and considering that the phone has a massive 5300mAh battery, the battery life on this thing is insane. You get a screen on time of around 10 hours or more on every day and you also are able to recharge the battery from 15% to 100% in just 2 hours flat. And that's really impressive and that's the highlight of this device itself. At the back you also have a fingerprint scanner with an inner chamfered edge and this is actually really accurate when it comes to the speed as well as the recognition of your fingerprint. It also does a fair job at registering your fingerprint or recognizing your fingerprint when your hands are fairly bit sweaty or wet 
but not when it's completely wet. Overall, the Mi Max 2 is a really great smartphone and at the asking price of Rs. 16999, I would definitely recommend it to those people who are into multimedia creation as well as multimedia consumption. It's also great as a secondary phone for those of you who have troubles with your main phone lasting you throughout the day, considering that you might be using it for multimedia consumption as well. In that case, this is a good secondary phone and this is a smartphone for all of you who have had any issues with battery. This phone will definitely remove that problem for you and although it's a bit big in terms of the physical footprint, I really love this device and for Rs. 16999 I think it's definitely worth it and is one of the best phones available on the market right now. That's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next one. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get the latest updates from us. Thanks for watching this video. See you again in the next one.